Hello class, uh, is everyone doing all right? Because due to the coronavirus spread, the school has decided to delay opening the school by May 12th, which is the ninth week after the midterm period, all right? Okay, okay, so that means we cannot meet in the classroom by the ninth week. Uh, last week, this uh, the coronavirus spread was slowing down, so I was hoping that uh, we could meet in the classroom and we can, um, we could have no problems doing your the coursework and your uh, the project individual project for this class specifically. But uh, we are in very dangerous situation, and your safety is the most important one uh, to consider uh, when you are taking the class or or doing your project. So I was worrying uh, so much about uh, this project, how this project could possibly work because we have to do the consumer interview we have to directly meet to go shopping with and that is very dangerous kind of activity uh, for the students to perform uh, due to uh, specifically in this situation all right so I was worrying too much about this project but one student <laughs> asked me if it is okay to select the consumer the one individual consumer for your project as herself so i was <gasps> that is an excellent idea that is really an excellent idea because it is um it is uh, we are in this situation we are staying home and we are having time reading books and thinking uh by oneself and thinking about oneself and this is a very perfect time to think about you and know better about you study about you do extensive research about you and to understand better about your consumption behavior and your fashion style and in this situation so we have plenty of time at home uh, and uh, study about uh, your uh, personality and your psychographical kind of information, how where your uh, behavior, attitude, and perceptions are coming from, and how you're going to better understand about your behavior and your um, uh, fashion choices as well. That's an excellent idea, okay? So uh, I strongly recommend you to choose your individual consumer as yourself, okay? Okay, so we don't have to worry about social distancing because it is really hard to keep the social distance of two meters. They are saying it is safe to keep the social distance of two meters uh, with your interviewee and you. And you can just uh, develop your questions for the interview and you can ask to yourself and you can answer to those questions to write a report and to perform and to conduct your individual project uh, for this class. Oh, what an excellent idea. And in case if you had chosen your family members or very close uh, friends, they, you can uh, meet regularly. <laughs> By the way, in that case, uh, please keep the social distance and uh, please um, try to use the text messaging uh, to ask questions and uh, we do have an assignment of accompanied shopping that is you're gonna uh, go shopping with like physically or you're gonna observe how their um, shopping clothes online that means you have to sit right next to him or her to see how they are doing their online shopping and that's very dangerous as well so it is better to choose yourself as your consumer that is the best option and uh, if you have chosen your individual consumer already like your mother or father please try to keep the distance and ask the questions as well um, and ask the questions what what was the what what was the first sight what was the first place you decide what what is the word that you type in just uh, right away what 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 is the word what what is the link and you can uh, use any technological devices to communicate with your consumer it is the best it is the best way if you can choose yourself as your consumer all right so uh for today's class uh, 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 okay i'm sorry uh so uh on this tuesday on on the net on the 
on the last Tuesday, we had a Zoom uh, meeting uh, with 17 students. 17 students participated. Thank you very much for your participations. And we had the class, the lecture class uh, during the class time. Um, but I have decided to make this uh, Zoom meeting as an additional channel for you to ask about your assignment and to ask about the course materials and ask some questions about the reading as well to discuss with me. So let's make that channel as additional one. So I, I uh, strongly recommend uh, to watch this YouTube video uh, and then while you're watching this video and if you have suddenly you have a question you can come to the zoom meeting and you can talk to me freely all right okay so on this coming thursday of uh, during the class time from 2 p.m to 4 p.m i'll be at the zoom meeting okay so uh, you can come at any time to uh, ask questions about this assignment if you had if you have any uh, further suggestions about this assignment and if you have any more uh, like this like brilliant kind of ideas just like her and in that case you can come and ask uh, about your um, ask about uh, your concerns and you can make alterations and you can uh, find alternative way to do better uh, to to do your uh, research okay all right so for today we are going to uh, continue to uh, talk about the personality and your personal style uh, as well as your consumer behavior reflecting your personality okay so we are going to start on the slide 18 uh, of your first uh, ppt material that i have uploaded on the ysec all right and nowadays, lots of fashion companies are making their final decision based on the data. So the data itself uh, about uh, your data that has been uh, presented on the social media and on the internet is all uh, collected uh, by the industry to analyze, to know better about you. And they are collecting your uh, psychographical uh, kind of information like your personality and they can access about to know about your personality. At the same time, they know what they like. But the, the ridiculous point here is they know that uh, you like curly fries and you are intelligent but they cannot find any connection between these two all right so what the data uh, industry and the data driven companies are missing uh, their analysis is missing is the connection between these two so they know that you are you're like this and you are this kind of person but they don't know why where those kind of connections are coming from so uh uh the data the the, the top leading kind of data driven uh, forecasting company like edited and they are doing they are doing the data collection and data analysis but at the same time they are doing much much more extensive research to know about the social phenomena nowadays so what people are interested in and what they are responding to and uh, what kind of person you are in detail to profile you better to know deeper uh, about you so uh, that is the point that uh, we want to try to practice for this course okay so so what uh, the data driven analysis is missing is about a deeper understanding about human beings all right so uh, they need uh, we need profound research on human beings in living in this society and the style zeitgeist uh, last we had talked about the the Goth Ninja and their Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist here means it is a German word which means the spirit of the times. What the times, uh, what the people living in these times are concerning and uh, thinking about and those kind of um, collective kind of ideas of the people who are living in this society and we need to know more about people's uh, your in as an individual person's fear and their basic desire okay
So、uh, we'd like to be honest about ourselves to know more about us to be like us. So we don't need to hide or we don't need to just conceal、uh, this some part because we are talking about the personality.、Uh, we are talking about some trade offs of the personality traits. But the real thing is that a lot of the behavior scientists are believing. They strongly believe that we. Are born in that way, so、uh, it is not necessary to change ourselves, to change our、uh, personality as it is, to fit in those kind of like、um, system-oriented ideas. So be true to yourself is what uh, this uh, field, uh, the scholars in this field are talking about. Okay, so、uh, the data-driven、um, companies like. Data-driven forecasting companies are saying that where the trend is coming from. Okay, so let's talk about the trends. We have talked about the zeitgeist and the, and the trends. What people want nowadays, and they have talked about the example of Gucci. Okay, so the Gucci is、uh, doing many kind of experimental kind of uh, things uh, to.、Um, To talk with the people who are、um, interested in Gucci, and they are、uh, sharing some ideas that、uh, Gucci is is talking about. All right, so they have presented for this year. They have presented their collection, which is titled "An Unrepeatable Ritual." <laughs> that is the fashion collection. It is that is a a kind of. Collection performance. They are presenting. This is us. This is the brand. Okay. And what they、uh, believe is they are、uh, presenting the backstage at the center of the stage. They are bringing the backstage up on the center of the main stage, and they are presenting. This is not just in a creation of one like genius、uh, fashion designers, but we are all working together. Yeah, to share those ideas, what the, and the philosophies of the brands, and they are presenting. Those all, all the efforts of the individual who are involved in this work,、uh, all together at at the scene. Okay, so that was considered. Oh yeah, that is. Talking to me and and those kind of responses has been drawn from this.、Hmm, Okay, collection, I believe, and、uh, where new trend is coming from. So they're thinking that is based on your、uh, deeper understanding about the people because they are presenting clothes and clothes are the consumption the consumption material. But that is for the people because people need clothing all the time, and if they are choosing a clothes to wear, and it is not just a material thing, but it. Is not just to express some、uh, yourself. That means、uh, that is sometimes considered at as superficial, but、uh, the symbolic meanings embedded on that and your strong beliefs、uh, regarding the zeitgeist of this society, and that is telling something more. So we're gonna continue to talk about the brand or the brand identity and brand personality and your personality associated with it and your personal. Style as well to know better about yourself. Okay. Okay. So for today, we are going to talk about your personal style and the style specific fashion style that you are interested in or you are、uh, feeling comfortable wearing on. In that case, that style yeah could、uh, reveal some part of your personality. Okay. So we are going to talk about the personality trait theories and、uh, your personal styles、uh, as well. Right. Okay. Why do we study personality? I believe we are studying personality to a better understand about the individual differences. Okay, 
way so we are born in different ways so everybody has different faces and different personality so uh, that is what uh, the dr uh, daniel nettle uh, who is very famous a behavioral behavioral scientist has talked about we are born in that way okay so uh, he has published um, many of series of the books about uh, the personality and happiness <laughs> you're gonna uh, be happy if you're accepting your personality as it is uh, this book the personality uh, it is pretty much talking about the big five personality that we had discussed on the next Tuesday, uh, the last Tuesday. We had talked about the five major traits of the personality, which is describing uh, pretty much about you. And we had talked about the trade-offs as well, because on certain uh, personality uh, elements of the personality, you must, you could be a high or low, or low. You could be high or low. On the level of your openness or your neuroticism or your consciousness and we have talked pretty much about that but uh, the real thing is what you see is only the the the, the negative parts of your personality and you want to change your personality <laughs> but uh, he is saying that if there is a negative point of your personality that should there should be a positive part of your personality at the same time okay there will always be a trade-offs uh, between those two different kind of levels of the personality elements okay so accept yourself as you are <laughs> that is what he is talking about and that is the best way to be happy to be happily uh, in your lives and uh like 10 years ago <laughs> i have visited the venice italy and i was just watching the, the venetian mass the masquerade uh, to choose uh, which one to make which one to purchase okay so i have seen all the different masks and the artisan who is the seller and the maker of this mask came to me and said that this year this white mask is popular i was so disappointed because there are so many faces and there must be the style that i want to wear but uh, there's a trend that's going on in venice as well so that that is a something that if if there is some people who cannot find their personal style and just follow the rules of the fashion uh, that is not the best way to seek to pursue your happiness so this book is talking about that and we are living in this society and you you're gonna have your choice you're gonna make many many choices in the future to choose the people or the groups of the people that you'd like to share your ideas with to be involved in to work with yeah in that case uh, you can have a better eyes to choose the people that you uh, will spend your most of your time that you will care and you spend your uh, life with okay so uh, we're gonna deeply understand about uh, where the personality theory has developed from now okay okay so what is personality personality is defined as dynamic and organized kind of set of your characteristic uh, which is possessed by you that uniquely influence your cognition how you think emotions how you feel and motivation what 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 is what kind of values are motivating you to do some kind of acts and behavior in various situations okay so so uh, you're gonna have a very typical or kind of unique kind of ways but that is pattern that there is a pattern that uh they can um, possibly see uh, what you're going to do predict what you're going to do uh, in the future all right so that is a set of your behavior and your characteristic that will go on uh, for your for your lifetime okay so that is lifetime long kind of characteristics of yours that is that important kind of part to understand better about your behavior so uh, this 
this here this is the movie that is a documentary movie which is titled as twister uh, that is talking about this is the real story talking about twin sisters who were born in korea uh, they are born in korea and they were adopted in their age of 16 months so in their age of two they have adopted one is adopted to an american family and one is adopted to the french family and they are separated they are identical twins that means they are their uh, arrangement of their genes are exactly the same they are identical twins and they are separated and adapted to different family in different world and different countries and they never knew they have twin sisters twin sisters to each other so they never communicated they never met they didn't know that uh, there are uh, their sister in this globe but accidentally uh, one girl has found one uh, the, her twin sister on the youtube while she was watching the youtube she suddenly found out oh, she's looking exactly like me she's talking exactly like me she's behaving exactly like me so contacted her and they finally met and they figured out that pretty much their their uh their taste and favorite color and their fashion style and their their taste what they like to eat and their favorite food are pretty much the same that is a miracle and that is a telling you that your personality is your inborn kind of trait. You are born in that way and you are living your life with the personality that you are born with. So that is an exact, um, the, the perfect example to see that uh, your personality is hardly changed. Uh, that means uh, your behavior and your future behavior will be pretty much the same as your current behavior and your characteristics. All right? Now, let me talk about the limitations on the typology of personality. We can typify some people. You are that kind of person. You are that kind of person. We cannot uh, do that because according to the B5 theory that we discussed before, uh, we are having certain degrees of the traits. That means everybody, everybody, everybody has different traits level. And that means uh, you, we have all different kind of personality uh, okay so so that is how we are going to understand better about the individuals the individuals characteristic and how we are all unique and different in some ways uh, but the ancient uh, the physician very uh, famous ancient physician hippocrates has mentioned about uh, people's like bodily fluid like you have the fluid and you you, you have it in your stomach and and those kind of organism your your body itself is telling pretty much about your personality because he was a keen kind of observer acute uh, observer to observe people because he had uh, many many of samples many many of data of the people how they behave and what their body is telling about their personality so uh, the words like bile and the words like Plum here is also a describing, if you look up the dictionary, it is describing about somebody's uh, personality. So that is a very ancient kind of view and very traditional view to see the people, to groupify people, to understand better about their behavior and personality, all right? Uh, let me continue to talk about the limitations on the personality typology. This blood type personality typology is the most notorious one, but it is widely accepted uh, by Japanese people because if you understand about Japanese culture, it is very collectivistic uh, kind of culture. That means people like to belong to the, the certain groups. So if they are, they can typify themselves as I'm, I'm type A, I'm type B. And type AB, and they they really like that, and they feel uh, comfortable being included in certain group and to know better about those groups. So that that is one one uh, limitation. The, the major limitation on this kind of typology is we cannot generalize because there are so many other individual individual uh, differences on their personalities uh, traits. So we cannot typify people in just 
four categories is not possible but uh, the blood type typology is very popular in japan and the, the doctor um the uh, masahiko nomi and he had developed a foundation of blood type typology and it had been it has been transmitted at uh, transcended to his son and his son is uh, spending his lives and, and Dr. Uh, Nomi also spent his lifetime to study on this typology in blood type and his son is his son is continuing to study about this typology. Interesting part is they had some experiment how people are responding to the pressure. <laughs> Uh, the situation of the pressure and you can see the emotional roller coasters of the people how they're responding to the, the stressful kind of situation and those kind of categories were widely accepted and in korean society as well there are lots of professors of the, in the field of psychology had done some research like collecting data and and see some statistics to generalize the idea of this typology and some of them have found out that type B male <laughs> male consumers of type B is showing those specific kind of behavior and those kind of findings are just and it cannot be widely accepted and nowadays a lot of scholars are saying that uh, this is just a self-realizing prophecy that means it's result-oriented kind of understanding the statistic is telling you type p e is doing like that type a is doing like that that is just result-oriented kind of uh, analysis based on based on your assumptions that you're going to behave like that because you are type certain certain types so that is considered as the major limitations of this study okay this is another example of the the personality typology dr sheldon in 1954 so it was an old old kind of study in the field of criminology criminology that means uh dr sheldon was uh, studying uh, about the criminals and their criminal crime behavior and their criminals behavior is somewhat related to uh, their uh, body types and uh, their cases are telling pretty much about uh, their personality and their body type itself is is gonna be a certain clue uh, to better understand about their future behavior right okay uh, the famous austrian psychologist and psychiatrist uh, the doctor uh, Sigmund Freud who is also known for the father of psychoanalysis has mentioned that our minds our personality has three dimensions id ego and super ego uh, id is your hidden minds that you you cannot um you cannot realize that you are having that kind of uh, the needs or desires in your mind so hidden that means you don't want to remember remember that uh, you have a you had uh, from from your childhood experiences you had cert certain kind of needs and desire or certain instincts but it has been banned <laughs> by the society and the norms of the society so you'd like to just uh, just keep it under your consciousness so that is called id and ego is very realistic kind of thinking you're thinking like if i behave like that it might be beneficial to me so in that case basic really a realistic uh, kind of thinking very cognitive thinking you're gonna think about the cause and effect and that is called ego and super ego is kind of um, very um high spirit that means that is the internalization of the social norms so it is acceptable yeah very religious kind of thinking is very a kind of thinking that everybody would agree and everybody would perceive perceive that's acceptable so that is called super ego about uh, what uh, Zygmunt Freud has focused on and pointed out is it is important to look into our deeper ego that we are hiding or our id that we, we chose to hide and look into that and try to understand better about them because that is the clue that is talking about the, the major motivations of your behavior, all right? 
okay so uh let me briefly introduce a little bit about uh Zygmunt Fruitt's model of psyche and and he is insisted there are two big uh, kind of fundamental kind of drives of your energy and your desires at the same time it is your fears that is called eros and thanatos eros means love that means love and life okay and thanatos means death okay so you have basic fear and desires for to live and to die okay at the same time all right all right so uh, you have desire for life that means you like to live your life well and that means you'd like to make a a very good relationship with others important others and have an have a like a uh, sexual uh, kind of um, relationship intimate relationship with your uh, important person uh, that is called eros and thanatos means you'd like to hurt yourself kill yourself and hurt others and harm others do some harm things uh, because you are in that that situation that you'd like to give up your life because your life is uh, so stressful and so hard harsh in that case you're gonna thinking about the death and the life and the death uh, is two basic uh drives for the energy at the same time it is uh the two basic the mo the most important fears that you might have uh on your mind okay so that is the model of the psyche that uh, Sigmund Freud had mentioned that mm, so for example if you're thinking of the case that your boyfriend or girlfriend is asking you to sacrifice you uh, to spend some money or time for him or for her in that case okay i can do that in that case that is uh, just a quick kind of thinking oh you're oh, okay i'm responding but in that case they are uh, like demanding more for you in that case you're gonna think about your uh a desire uh, if i'm accepting that kind of stimuli and they're gonna ask more in that case your a uh, process oriented kind of thing Thinking, like slow thinking system will be activated yeah in that case you're gonna cope with that situation all differently okay so in those kind of stimulus kind of situations you are responding all differently because you are a conscious level as well as your level of significance that it that is important situation that is not very that is casual situation and those kind of standards are all different for individual people so Sigmund Freud said that the defense mechanism how you are coping with how you're responding to certain kind of situation is saying pretty much about your personality okay so let's talk about the defense mechanism all right so a defense mechanism according to Sigmund Freud is defined as your unconscious a psychological mechanism that reduces your anxiety okay so if you are in the situation of st stressful situation you'd like to behave in certain ways in certain ways to reduce your anxiety okay your bad feelings all right so uh, the first one is called repression you're going to repress your mood you repress your feeling that uh, you're feeling anxious about something but r you refuse to think about that anymore all right so you are telling lies to yourself that uh, Oh, I, I don't I don't want to think about that. Oh, I don't want to think about this. So you're gonna move your conscious conscious ideas under your unconscious level. Okay, so you don't wanna think about that. You just want to forget about that. You're telling to to your to yourself that to repress that feeling so that is called uh, repression which is one typical uh, defense mechanism and the second word second word here that i have is rationalization you're going to rationalize your uh, behavior you're going to justify the behavior you have already done okay so um in case of you your behavior or motivations are considered as not acceptable 
cold sometimes. I pay too much on that on that purchase. In that case, uh, you're gonna justify your ideas that uh, that was on sale. So I saved my money overall. So that is good kind of good acceptable reason to remove your anxiety. Okay. So that is called another defense mechanism, rationalization, and the third one is called projection. Projection is projecting your ideas to somebody else's so in case uh, you'd like to do something and you're gonna uh, uh, tell your friends or some other people that uh, that that is your idea and that that is my idea to do to like to do something or uh, you can um, uh, use this projection defense mechanism to have more powerful the persuasion persuasive power uh, to say that uh, you are thinking uh, you are saying if you're having a team meeting that you're saying this is my idea and uh, this is just my idea and that is not a uh, kind of very persuasive kind of uh, kind of idea and you're gonna come come up with some authorities like oh my professor has said it. the textbook has said that uh, the the the, re the recent uh, article the the academic article has mentioned about that and that was your idea and your opinion and you're coming up with some authorities and that is called as a projection okay so uh, we have mentioned and and briefly talked about three uh, basic um, defense mechanism that people usually use when they're facing certain kind of anxious uh, like situations okay so uh, on the next week uh, when we're talking about the attitude and the behavior we are going to go further uh, to discuss more about this defense mechanism because that is the clue to understand about one's behavior and their hidden desires and the fears all right Okay, uh, let me introduce a little bit about the Gordon R. Port's trait theory, okay? So trait is your uh, personality characteristic, which is uh, described as an adjective, okay? So adjective, adjective form. So Gordon R. Port has looked up the dictionary uh, to find any adjective which is describing someone's personality, and he found 4,500 uh, 4, words. Uh, which is talking about someone's personality and he uh, tried to narrow it down narrow it down to a group make a groups of similar words and narrow it down and he had uh came up with uh, like 16 a 16 adjective which is describing someone's personality and they did research a study a collecting data from the people uh, and did a psychological uh, research to uh, better understand about the people and their personality and he found out uh, there are a certain central trait which means we have talked about the big five theory if you're very high in openness to new experiences very high like five 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 in that case your your that your openness might be a uh, your a uh, central a uh, trait open very open kind of person who likes adventurous like uh, like traveling around and and having uh, much experiences imaginative and, and intelligent and this kind of a uh, person and the central trait and the central trait is if you are describing yourself in like just uh, use five adjective words to describe about yourself like five adjective what kind of words can could be uh, in your mind that is your central trait uh, telling pretty much about you and it's the secondary trait is you'd like to add some more more adjective to like more than 10 adjective yeah to understand to describe more about you and that is called the secondary trait okay Okay, so Dr. Carl Jung, a Swiss a psychoanalyst, and um, he had uh, narrowed down the, all the, uh, the, the personality traits uh, into eight 
categories okay so eight categories and the important part here is uh, he had put uh, those two opposite uh, adjective two opposite words on a binary position so if you are extroverted you are not introverted you are introverted you are not extroverted and those kind of two opposite words were placed placed on the on the one x okay so uh, you can see extroversive and on, on the on the big five theory we have also talked about the, the this uh, personality elements and, and extroverted people is the people who are listening to others so they are sensitive they are very sensitive to trends and they are sensitive to uh, the what the, the people are talking about and an intuitive atmosphere introversive people are uh, those if you are very very high on your introversive level that means means uh, you are a uh, listening to yourself <laughs> having your time alone uh, thinking about yourself and listening to yourself <laughs> and that is called introversive having a strong opinion of themselves okay and the second category was called sensing and intuitive a sensing means what you sense is what you believe what you see is what you believe so you'd like to see on uh, the practical uh, kind of info you want you want to see the correct and practical and and tangible kind of information and that is practical a uh, kind of information or the detail you'd like to listen to that like very detailed and very concrete uh, kind of facts will i'll tell you the information and the intuitive person uh, if you're very high on the level of intuition intuitive that means you'd like to uh, listen to very abstract kind of ideas and imaginations all right so that is called intuitive and thinking person and the feeling person are two opposite kind of uh, binary uh, characteristics of the people that is what Carl Jung has insisted uh, but the thing is nowadays people are uh, putting limitations on this category division divisional uh, category to see thinking person are not feeling person feeling person are not thinking person and and then you you can see the category of judging and perceiving that is pretty much opposite kind of a characteristic of one's personality like perceiving is you are just accepting things being open-minded accepting what others are saying and uh, you're listening to others opinion yeah, and attitude and you're leaving your options open but in case you're judging you're making the judgment under your certain kind of standards for this judgment so you have a you are a strong opinion and attitude which is strongly settled all right okay uh, we are continuously talking about the trait personality trait and this is a not a recent study but that was the study that has been done in 1990s in the united states and it was the first approach to see the brand as a human being okay so brand as a person to describe the brand as his as their personalities so they adopted the big five personality theory okay and to describe about the brand's personality and they have like um, uh, collected all the famous or the most loved kind of brands by american people in 1990s and they have found the, the major characteristics that the major uh, the personality trait elements was narrowed down by five and they have developed their own model of five personality characteristic that has been mostly loved by american in 90s and that was sincerity and excellent competent sophisticated and ruggedness <laughs> and and those kind of uh, personality elements were um witnessed by the brands like coca-cola coach nike and holly davidson and um they have um, like collected many many uh, more um brands like more than 100 brands and they have collected the data from the consumer's preference and their consumer's personality and their consumer's personality itself and their uh, preferences on the brand's personality were quite uh, connected and related and that was their major findings right 
Okay, so what I want you to do is for your uh, individual project is to think more about your personality traits and your hidden uh, kind of traits that you are unrevealing, okay? And then you're going to talk about uh, your personal style, uh, the, your, the most frequently worn style or the style that you love, okay? They, that you want to try, okay? So that is what uh, the personal style is talking pretty much about uh, your uh, who you are and uh, what kind of characteristics and personal and the personality uh, components that you are born with okay so you'd like to think more about uh, your personality and personal uh, style of by seeing uh, these examples all right so I'm gonna show you these examples okay so let me see you on the next video all right Thank you.